So if you're one of these lucky homeowners who has a bathroom without a fan, then you live in the north like we do, then every time it comes winter time, you leave the window shut because you're not having a shower with the window open when it's minus 30 degrees outside. So if you want to install a fan, you've really got to do a little bit of work here. One of the things you got to do is you got to open up the ceiling. In this particular job, I've got an old bathroom that just does not have a fan in it. And so we've just gutted the thing back to the studs and we're rebuilding. So we have the luxury of being able to run wiring and ducting and do all this stuff without any obstruction. Take it from me, if you're going to install a fan and you don't have an existing one, you're going to want your wall and your ceiling open. This is how you're going to find your best exit, okay? So first rule is you need power. So you need to get an electrical wire from your box up through the ceiling over to where the fan's going to go. And don't be cheap when you run this. Leave lots of length. That'll give you the flexibility to pick a location, which corner of the fan and all that kind of jazz. Put a screw in the ceiling and hang your wire <laughs> off that screw out of your way. And if you want to know how to connect all that to the boxes, we actually did the wiring video on how to wire this entire bathroom. We'll put the link in the description below. The second thing you're going to need is a cavity to put your fan in. Most situations in a bathroom ceiling, you've got a lot of options. So one of the things you want to keep in mind is, is where do you want the exhaust to go? You don't want it near a window. And where do you want your fan to go? Ideally, it's in about the middle of the room in the highest location of the ceiling. So in this case, as long as you've got your studs with a, a decent span, usually 16 inches, most fans are eight or 10 inches, maybe even 12 inches wide, so you've got lots of options. Number three thing that you need when you're installing your fan is ductwork going to the outside. Now, oh, this is gonna be nasty. Yeah, this is some really old stuff here. Ugh. Here we go. So there's my, there's my exit. Now the ductwork is four and a half inches wide with all of the insulation and vapor barrier that's attached on the ducting. So what you want to do is you want to try to keep this as simple as possible. So what I do is I take my drill and I'm just going to put a pilot hole right through and mark it all the way to the outside of the building. And then I'm generally going to do most of my cutting from outside, but I'm going to show you a trick. It'll save you from getting injured. Okay, no daylight there. And the fun thing there is, I just put that whole drill bit in there, that's pretty big, no daylight. So I've got a pretty thick wall before we get to the other side of the vinyl siding over there, but I don't care because the goal here was to create a pilot hole. Now I'm gonna show you the next trick. Now this is a hole saw. It is a brilliant little machine. It's a four and a half inch diameter. And if I drill this hole this big, I have more than enough space to get my ducting in and out and it'll be quite comfortable to do so. We get it locked in place, and you can imagine, with the depth of the hole that we just put that drill bit in, that means there's gonna be a lot of wood. Now, this thing is gonna heat up and expand and get bind. It's gonna throw you off your ladder. So all we wanna do is use that hole that we drilled, set our drill bit in there, and we're just gonna use this drill bit to mark the diameter that we wanna cut. There we go. Mission accomplished. Do yourself a favor and put this away now. This is the wrong material to try to cut through three inches of wood with. Whew. All right, so just to help you understand what's going on, that's the size of the hole we marked on the wood, and that is larger than the ductwork. That's a good thing, okay? Best practice is to pull your ductwork all the way through, connect this from the outside, which is your exhaust, and then pull it back into position, and then screw it into place on the outside screws. Now you'll see these screws are about an inch away from the duct line, which is good. So as long as when we cut our hole, we don't have to cut a circle, we can cut a diamond, all right? That'll leave the wood in the place so that we have something to attach this to when we screw back in. That's the secret. So we'll put this away. So we're gonna go to our third bit now. This is a one inch diameter bit. This is actually designed to make the hole big enough that I can get my sawzall blade in there. I can cut that from the outside. So, so you'll notice that the bit, because it's one inch, it'll actually drill a half an inch larger if I put this right in the groove. So we're gonna go there to create a hole and drill it all the way through. Oh. Just a secret when you're drilling holes, if you take the end of the drill 
and you push it up against the ceiling, if it does catch and bind, it'll want to twist the drill. But if it's already up against the ceiling, it's not going to break your wrist. There we go. I got all the way out to the vinyl siding that time. The problem is, I didn't pierce it. So I'm going to have to get a bit extender so I can get out that far. The idea is we're going to do all four corners just like a diamond. That way I can use my other saw to connect the dots. Oh, we got daylight that time. Now real quick, because this technology for construction here is super old, we have a balloon construction house with like basically one by six, one by eight boards, and there's two layers of them. If you're in a more modern house, you might have a rim joist that is actually up to two inches thick. It's a solid piece of wood. If that's the case, that's okay. It's not structural in the way that it's carrying a load. So you feel free to drill this hole in it. Um, it might only be like a five eighths or a half inch, you know, just aspenite. That's okay too. Just go ahead and drill your hole. The secret here is to make sure that you try to keep it so that you have some meat for the screws on that ducting to screw into and you're not going to interrupt that because you don't want to install your exhaust fan with just caulking if you can get away with it. The other thing you might find is you might be one of the lucky ones from the 50s to 60s where you actually actually have a stone wall or a block wall. Different parts of uh, North America there's still stone construction. If that's the case to get this hole you got to call a core drilling company and have them come out. They've got great equipment they can knock that off for you in about three minutes. All you got to do is measure from the inside translate that hole to the outside for them. Tell them exactly where to drill, and they'll get it done for you. You don't even have to go rent a tool. There we go. More daylight. Loving it. Real quick tip here. If you're cleaning your drill bit like I was, take the battery out. You don't want to hit that trigger by accident while your hands are on it. Whew. we go. We extend our bit a little bit. Maybe we can make the hole in the top work too. Vinyl siding has a profile so sometimes you need just a little bit more depth to get out. It works. All right we're good to go. Let's go out and make ourselves a bigger hole. Remember when you come outside to make your hole you're gonna need a big step ladder. It is always a lot higher up here than it is when you're inside. Now, I just want to take your utility knife if you have vinyl siding and just connect the dots cut it all away create that diamond. All right if you have wood siding, um, just use the saw. If you have brick at this point, man, you got a little bit of chiseling to do. But for me, I'm just going to connect the dots with my knife and anticipate where my hole is because the other part of that drill bit didn't really make it down. Okay. And once I've got my layout done, there we go. I'll just go through the process of cutting it through. Now, it's springtime here, it's only a couple of degrees, but vinyl siding in the sun is generally pretty pliable and will cut nice. If it's cold outside, it gets brittle. So you might want to wait until it warms up a little bit before you do it. Uh, for me, I'm not too concerned with what's going on here because we are eventually planning to change all the siding on this building. But for now, since the bathroom will be ready in a couple weeks, I want to make sure that this exhaust is in nice and early so I can have my fin ready to go as soon as it's ready to go. <laughs> and this is just that ex exterior cardboard garbage. And we got insulation board to cut through. Layer on layer on layer. Remember, when you're working on a ladder, don't put your weight into what you're doing. Just use your arms. That way, if you slip, your arm moves, but you aren't going to fall off the ladder. There we go. Okay. <laughs> now, for time for some power tools. All right. Well, let's get this hole cut. 
Real quick question for you. Just, uh, we got a couple of crazy ideas we're thinking of doing. Just wanted to get your input. Uh, which video would you like to see first? We want to build a custom pool, and we want to do that ourselves, me and my son. And we also want to build a custom hot tub off the side of the house. So we're just wondering, if you guys want to let us know, uh, you know, which would you prefer to see? Because we can only afford to do maybe one of those projects, first thing going into next spring. But we want to do a lot of that work and prep work later this fall, so we're ready to go. So let me know in the comment section below. Do you want us to do the pool first, or do you want us to do the custom hot tub first? I'm interested to hear what you got to say about that, and maybe some design plans as well. We can build you something you can actually use. Here we go. There we go. Ah. Nice. All right, now I'm gonna to go to back to the inside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shove my ducting through. We have a square now that's four and a half inches wide. We just push our ductwork through. Here we are. Okay. Whew. All right. What I'm gonna do, just to make my life easier here, I'm gonna cut back some of this extra insulation out of the way. Just start with cutting through this plastic vapor barrier at the side. Tearing all that out. There we go. This stuff generally fits pretty exact. You can use a gear clamp here to, if you like to connect it, but just to make it easier to slide back in and out, I like to use the tape. You really want to use the tape to connect this piece to this, because this is the plastic flange on the outside of the house. The metal piece that's attached to the plastic flange, it's really only just snapped into a couple of little brackets. So if you tape the actual plastic piece together, then you'll get a much better seal, and you're gonna have confidence knowing it's not gonna disengage over time. Remember, whenever you cut your tuck tape, leave a little extra. That way you mark your spot and you can always find it again. <laughs> this stuff is really frustrating to work with. You don't do that. Now, if I have any clue about what I'm doing, I'm just gonna be able to push this right back inside without any difficulty. Huh, looks like I've got difficulty. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, now, this is not a perfect world installation here. So there are two goals when you're doing this sort of thing. One is to get it installed, and the other is to get it sealed. Right? You don't want water getting in behind this and getting behind the siding. You can accomplish that by cutting the siding and recessing this plate. There's also some fancy siding plates that you can get and you can install it while you're building your siding. If you're doing a retro situation like this, you're probably gonna end up just like me, right in the middle of the transition from the old, the top, some, no, sorry, right in the middle of the transition from one piece to the next. So I've got this huge gap. Oh well, cocking will fill it. One thing you can do before you get started is if you drill your first hole all the way to the outside, you can take a look from this point of view if I move the ducting up or down, am I gonna have a benefit? In this case, it didn't make a difference either way. So there are a lot of different exhaust vent covers out there in the world. For the most part, any three-piece bathroom will run about 110 CFM. A four-inch line is perfect for that. They do come bigger. So if your situation requires a five-inch line, you can get a vent cover that matches that. This one I love because it has an animal screen on it. This is really great because it's easy to remove for cleaning if you need to, right? That way, if you have anything building up inside there, you can get it at it. But generally, it keeps birds from nesting. Okay, now remember, we're just doing this temporary, so if you're finishing your house, make sure you put your quad or your polyurethane caulking around there, and you're good to go. Now you got a bathroom fan exhausted on the outside, let's go back inside and we'll show you how to tighten everything up in there too so you don't have drafts. So the next step is for us to install our fan. The room is basically finished, the ceiling's got a first coat of paint on it. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about channel business, all right? If you're liking this kind of content, make sure you hit the button in the right hand corner, subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber and you've got major projects coming up, 
and you need help, more access, then I would consider maybe hitting the join button. For $5 a month, we've got all kinds of perks and access so that you can get more help if you need it. Now, let's get back to work. We have here our new tone Invent Series fan. What this means is, you'll see this little picture when you're in the store. This product picked up at Home Depot, okay? What that means is you cut the square the size of the hole the fan will go into, and you can install it without having to go into the attic, or in this case, the ceiling between the first and second floor, which works out great. So this way, like we showed in the video earlier, we were able to run our run from outside, and now it's time to put the fan in. I took out all the packaging. I'm just gonna go through what's in the box real quick. Of course, you have a finished fan grill, and you've got the Beast fan, and that is a, that is, that is a one sewn fan, which in the world of fans is pretty quiet. It's not the quietest thing on the market, but for the price, it is pretty darn quiet. This is another piece that goes on the housing, that's for later, and here is your box, okay? Now you'll notice there's a punch out here for the electrical. This housing here will remove for now, it just snaps back in place. And it also has three screws in the box. You use this to screw this housing into this after it's installed. That's lovely. The only thing missing from that is the grommet that goes in the electrical. Now, some fan companies actually put this electrical grommet in there. Some don't, but you can buy these. If you're in the Home Depot, go to the electrical department and ask them for an electrical grommet. Don't make the mistake and buy the box of 50. <laughs> all right, so we will put all these finished things aside for now, we measured off roughly where our fan is going. It's about here. Now, I'm gonna cut a hole a few inches back, representing what I think is the center of the room. Usually when I'm framing a room, I'll use the fan for the center of the room as a guideline so that I will always know where my fan is supposed to be installed. So until I actually open this space, I can't be 100% confident where the fan goes. So we're gonna cut a little bit of an exploratory hole here. And, and hopefully when we open up the ceiling, we'll find the ducting in there and we'll be ready to roll. <laughs> There's my ducting, there's my wire. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just feel around for where I have framing. Yes, yes, clear, and that side should be clear. Now if you remember, when we set this up, we have our exhaust coming into here, this direction, which means we have framing on this wall and this wall, so we can screw this side and this side into the drywall. Now this side we're going to want to put a piece of strapping on and that'll be relative to what's left over the framing. If you have the fan with you when you're framing your bathroom, then you can take your measurements and frame the whole three sides up perfectly. Make sure you don't put framing on this side. You'll see between the half inch drywall and the bottom of this exhaust port, there's not a lot of space. You can't even get a piece of strapping on your drywall there. You won't have the clearance. So what we want to do now is just stick our tape measure up here. Put your finger on it, hold it nice and flat, and measure off where the wood is. We're at eight, eight inches there, four inches there. All right. Now I'm going to measure from the wall to my spot, 46 and a quarter. All right. And I'm going to translate that information here. And I'm going to measure this off, 39. I'm going to translate that information here. What that gives me is the square, okay? From this point, I can measure both directions and then finish off the hole. That's my maximum allowance. Now, my investigation hole leaves me at 11 and 3 quarters. This housing goes only for 11, all right? So what I actually have to do is I have to use this as my first piece, all right? And I'm gonna to have to put a piece of strapping in the ceiling here and a piece of strapping in the ceiling here, all right? So what we'll do, there's my strap. 
get over this way. There it is. Now, I have lots of room in here. Here we are. Now, just putting it on those two measurements here. That's on my line. I'm going to go 10 and a quarter this way. All right. So here I am. I'm just tracing out my square that I'm going to cut. It should be 10 and a quarter square, which gives me just a little bit of room. Just a little bit of wiggle room, eh? The cool thing about this is it's also got the measuring marks on it. So not only is it square, but it's gonna be perfect 10 and a quarter. And don't worry about any other pencil marks on the ceiling. I only painted the ceiling one coat on purpose. <laughs> and this is why. Thanks, sir. We'll cut the rest of this out. Remember when you're using a drywall saw, always cut pushing up. The teeth are on an angle. If you're trying to cut and, and pushing forward on the way down, you're just going to rip the drywall right off the screws. <laughs> All right. So we've cut our hole just a little bit bigger than the housing itself because it has a flange. And that's a half inch flange all the way around. So the idea is the flange will come up in contact with the ceiling. And what you want to do is you want to screw up through the flange into the wood, okay? So we'll just do a little dry fit here. And it's going to fit fine. The finished housing, you'll see it, it's again a half an inch wider than the, the metal flange on both sides. Okay, so you've got a little bit of mercy there. Can you take that for me? Now, although they make this for uh, installing without an attic, they've included these little tabs on the side in case you're installing this before you close the ceiling. For us, what we do, we just take our, our pliers and just, and they'll come off because we don't need a mounting tab. We're going to install strapping on top of our drywall that we can screw our flange right into and create a compression. And now the sealing drywall is actually going to hold the weight of the fan. Okay, so let's go through this. We have our exhaust port, we have our ducting. It's a lot more ducting than I need right now. I'll push it back out of the way, if I can. <laughs> I have my power feed for my fan. <gasps> Look at that, I've already planned in advance. I've got my little tab on it, in case I couldn't find one later. That was brilliant. I just spent 20 minutes going through my shed looking for another one. Awesome. Here we go. And the fan is gonna install like that without all this in the way now. Electrical staple in the way. Don't need that anymore. Okay, so that's where our fan's gonna go. All right, and you can see that I made the hole bigger than it needs to be, and that's fine. Uh, cut off the extra ducting so that it's right at the hole. That should at least push out of the way for the time being. Now, this. It's going to go here and here. Okay. Now I'm using flooring screws to attach this because where I'm from we have Robertson bits and these screws fit on there really nice all by themselves without any worries. And I'm going to bring my strapping here. Let me do this side first because it's on camera. I'm going to bring my strapping in just to close the extra gap off. I have too much of a gap. Get the hell out of the way here. Okay, I'm going to attach that inside of where my finished ceiling cover is going to be. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that screw being exposed. I'm not going to have to do any patching or putty or anything like that. This is all going to be covered. And then over here, we're going to just put that a little bit more flush. 
And I don't need these screws to hold forever. I just need them to hold that wood in place until I screw my flange to it. And then gravity actually does all the work for me. Alrighty. Because we're installing it straight up, we also want our electrical supply to come from the top. If it comes from the side, we won't be able to stick it through the hole. This particular fan comes with an adjustable flap. There you go. <laughs> and then that's now the hole on the top is exposed for the electrical. Brilliant. So I can take this now and prep my wire, cut my sheathing. And yes, I'm actually going to wire the fan today. I'm working on my own house on my own electrical permit. So I'm completely within my legal rights to be able to do this. Love living in Ontario. I imagine some of you folks from California will have to hire an electrician for this. All right, that's it. We're almost done installing. Believe this or not. Now, pass this up right through your hole. Oh, I'm a little bit too tight. Not a problem. Gonna make a minor adjustment. And that should work. So this isn't a perfect world, right? In a perfect world, they would have made this flange with a one inch overhang, and they would have made the cover big enough Made this such an exact science that you're really you're running the risk, eh? Yeah, there's a little tab here. There we go. Okay. Now all we do is screw right up through here, which is where my wood is. Like you see this? I am only a quarter inch away from my steel. So if I screw at an angle, I'm sure to catch that strapping. All right. There we go. Same thing over here. And because I'm installed in the back, there's wood there as well. Now, that gives me three screws. That'll hold a couple hundred pounds. The fan weighs about eight. I think we're gonna be fine. Okay, so now it's time for me to get my exhaust fan. Now we're using flexible line, obviously. Now here it is, right? It's all the way in here. There you go. Wow, nice direct run. That is perfect. If it's any longer than the width of the housing, it's too much. This collapses, okay, and this insulation actually should be pushed back outside the fan housing for this, this, in, this part of the installation. Do be careful. The metal is sharp. You can always wear gloves. I prefer to be able to feel what I'm touching and wear the odd band-aid or a piece of electrical tape on my hand. So, Matt, can you throw me the uh, thing that goes here? That's the one. Look at these, reading my mail. Okay. Now the cool thing about this is this housing is set up, it's got a screw port right here. It lines up with this, okay? The reason they made it this way is you can actually not install it upside down. There's not enough room for this piece here to go on the right side. It has to go on the left where the screw is made which is perfect because you don't want the air blowing from outside <laughs> open. Some fans, they don't have this kind of mechanism built in. And if you put it in upside down, <laughs> the wind blows right through. So if you've got a fan in your house and the cold is pouring in, in the winter time, chances are this is upside down. And all you gotta do is climb in your attic, take it off, rotate it, and it'll work great again. But anyway, there's a free tip for somebody out there. I just sounded like a televangelist. Someone out there is getting healed of osteoporosis. <laughs> there are a lot of different ways to connect plastic to plastic. You could use a gear clamp. You could use all kinds of stuff. Heck, you might even get away with some duct tape. But for my money, plastic to plastic, that's tuck tape neighborhood right there. Once that bonds together, it's never coming off. And that cost me three cents and 15 seconds. All we do is stick that back in now. There are little tabs on the side that have to be positioned just right. So you have to stick it in on an angle. 
okay, to get the tabs in, and then it closes like a door. And that's where one of our set screws go. Most likely it's a Phillips. It's always a Phillips. God help us with a Phillips screw. <sighs> I would give somebody a lot of money if they would stop using Phillips screws. All right, here we go. Done. So let's get this straight. Our wiring is here. Our ducting is there. We're structurally sound. It's not a lot to it, right? It's pretty straightforward stuff. Now what we have to do is connect our wiring harness to our wires. So you need your wire strippers. Love these. There's different ones. I have a nice set that are pretty handy from Crescent Wrench people. And on one side it's a square and plier, on the other side it's a wire stripper. I keep that in my toolbox all the time, just in case I get myself in a situation where I need them. So, a 14-2 wire has three wires. The ground, which is not part of the two equation, there's a 14-gauge white and a 14-gauge black. That's why it's called 14-2. Every wire has a ground, whether it's got a red and a white and a black, or just a white and a black, okay? So that's not part of the equation. This is a 14-2. Standard house wiring and this wire here is actually too short. So I'm going to take my wire strippers and I'm going to strip. This is more of a 10 gauge, much smaller. We're just going to take the casing off. You can see these strippers are awesome. They have the different gauge wire numbers on them, okay? 10 gauge, sorry, this is a 16. The bigger the number, the smaller the wire, right? And I like to have almost an inch of wire, seems to be perfect, because I'm using these blue twisted morettes. Okay, these will twist just about any two wires in the world together, they're awesome. And generally speaking, I've got a fixed copper and then this kind of multi-strand filament wire. Just give it a little twist, hold it in place, and then let this moret do all the work. Inside the moret, there's a little coil, okay? And it helps to encourage the wires to twist together properly. All right, you do it the same with the white and the ground. All right, just a little twist, just to hold it in place. Stick that moret on there. All right, here we go. Now this is all new construction. We haven't even put power to any of these lines yet. If you're doing a reinstallation of a fan then make sure you turn off the breaker always safer than sorry here we go one of the keys you want to make sure of when you're doing this at home is make sure that when you look at the moret okay you don't see any of the copper wire from the white or the black showing okay because if either of those come in contact with this ground wire which is not it doesn't have a sheathing on it poof, you're gonna have it blow up on you now, it'll just short out the circuit. It's not going to start a fire and take down your house. But it is awfully irritating to have the power go off. So we take this housing, and we're going to slide this up. There's a tab on each side here that this needs to go into. There we go. And on the bottom, there's a tab. And you just push that up until it snaps in the hole. That's installed. There's no screws. That one's all finished now. Now, right here on my fan, it says it's 110 CFM, which is cubic feet per minute, which is 110 cubic feet per minute. It's going to be sucked out of here. So after the course of five minutes, pretty much every three-piece bathroom in the world has had all of the air evacuated. All the moisture is gone. This is why these work so darn well. It's one sewn, which means it's extremely quiet. And it just slides up into place, right? There we go. And it snaps into place. Woohoo! It also has in the package three more of these little set screws with the lovely Phillips bit. And you set these. One on each side of this little flange. You'll see it better on this shot here. There's a little set screw area here. That's just to make sure that the fan won't accidentally slide out of its housing over time. Wow, that is awesome. And this is a humidity sensor, okay? Right? And this is the way you plug it into power. Done and done. I am going to do one more coat of paint on the ceiling to cover up all of my pencil marks. I anticipate that I'm going to need to do it. So when I'm installing a fan, I always like to do one coat of paint before I'm finished. Now the way we do this is we pinch all of these wires. We're under compression and we want to just put it on each side of these little right here. 
holds it up to the ceiling. And all of those screws and everything else are all covered. Now, I can move this around a fair amount. If you have any hole exposed, just try moving your fan housing around, and that's it. Okay? And if you ever have to do any maintenance, you can simply take the grill, pull it down. Ah, okay? And then pinch the wires together and slide it out. I'll put this in after the ceiling coat of paint is dried. But there we have it. If you'd like to see how the rest of this bathroom turns out, click the video right over here. All right, it's a playlist for all of the elements in this custom walk-in shower bathroom. You're gonna love it. See you again next time.